Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Ericstrains.com. Today we're going to take a look at the new 3-rail O-scale Pensy S2 steam turbine from Lionel. The S2 was a direct drive steam turbine that was built for the Pennsylvania Railroad around 1944 by Baldwin. It was a 686 locomotive, and for you newcomers, that refers to the wheel arrangement. It had six wheels up front, eight drive wheels, and six wheels on the trailing truck. And I believe the S2 was the only example of a 686 locomotive. Now, unfortunately, the S2 was a one-of-a-kind engine. There were never any more built because it was not a very successful engine, owing to the fact that it's a steam turbine. The steam turbine was very efficient at high speeds, but at low speeds, it was very inefficient and consumed a lot of fuel, and it also had very high maintenance costs. And so for that reason, it was never much more than an experiment for the Pensy. It was retired in 1949 and scrapped in 1953. But I've said this before, the nice thing about model railroading is that we don't have to worry about fuel efficiency or maintenance costs. We get to run whatever we want. So let's talk about this model. Lionel offered this latest version of the S2 in their 2013 Volume 1 catalog, and it shipped toward the end of 2013. The S2 is a significant model for Lionel because, of course, the original post-war turbines that Lionel made in the 1940s and 50s, those being the 671, the 681, the 682, and the 2020, are some of the most beloved post-war engines that Lionel ever made. So Lionel has been associated with the S2 for quite a long time, and it's for that reason that they've actually made three different versions of this model. They made this model, which is based on the real Pensy 6200, but they've also made two versions that are based on the classic post-war turbines that they made back in the 40s and 50s. One of those is numbered 671 and has the Lionel Lines road name on it. The other is numbered 682 and has the Pensy road name on it. So if you're looking for a modern scale version of one of those post-war classics, you've got that option. Now, as for me, I've never owned one of the post-war turbines, but I've always been a big fan of them. So for me, it's really cool to finally get a more realistic full-scale version of the S2 for my layout. Let's go over some quick stats and facts on this engine. The combined length of the engine and the tender is just a tad over 30 inches. The weight of the engine is 9 pounds 9 ounces. The weight of the tender is 6 pounds 7 ounces. So you've got a combined weight of 16 pounds. This engine has 2 pounds 13 ounces of pulling power. And the minimum curve needed to operate this engine is 072. On the inside, the engine is powered by one large flywheel motor. And then in the front of the engine, there's an operating smoke unit. In the tender, you'll find the electronics packages for the legacy control system as well as legacy rail sounds. There are three ways to operate this engine. The preferred method is to use Lionel's legacy command system as that will give you access to all of the engine's advanced features. If you don't have legacy, you can also use Lionel's classic TMCC command system or you can run the engine conventionally. This engine has lots of nice features and details, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. Let's start off by looking at the front of the engine. Right here, we've got the big radiator that was one of the hallmarks of the S2. Below that, we've got the pilot, and we've got some separately applied hoses here, some nice step detail, and then we've got a dummy scale coupler that swings out like that. And if you want to, you can swap that out with a dummy O-gauge coupler that's also packaged with the engine. Moving up, we've got these elephant ears on either side, and on the elephant ears there are cast-in grab irons and also some cast-in steps on the inside. And then right here we've got operating marker lights. There's an operating headlight with lighted number boards on either side, and then the front of the boiler swings open like that. Down under, the side frames on the lead truck have nice cast-in details, and you can see some really nice pipe work starting here. As we move back, you can see the nicely detailed drive wheels. There's not much drive gear on this engine because it's a steam turbine, but what is there is nice. And then you can also see the continuation of all this nice pipework here and back here. And as we move back toward the area under the cab, you can see a nicely detailed firebox, as well as some nice casting details on the trailing truck. Now, at the bottom of the firebox, this engine has the variable ash pan glow effect. 
And the way that works is that when the engine is in operation, there's a red glow emanating from the ash pan. And then as the engine gets up speed, that glow becomes more intense. If we take a look at the sides of the boiler, just behind the smoke deflectors, there are legible builder's plates. We've also got some nice cast-in details. We've got the throttle assembly here. And then we've got separately applied handrails that run down either side of the boiler. Looking down the other way, there's not a lot to see here, but that's pretty true to the prototype. But we do have some nice cast-in and separately applied details here and there. Here's a look at the cab. The exterior looks great. We've got the Pensy designed window here with a nice trim around it. There's a clear plastic insert here. There are separately applied grab irons here, as well as on either side of the doors. There are also separately applied ladders leading up to the doors. The doors themselves are cast in, and I'm thinking that that's owing to the fact that this is a slightly older tooling that Lionel is using. I'm willing to bet that if this was a brand new tooling, these doors would open up, but it's not that big of a deal. On the inside, there are two hand-painted crew figures and a number of hand-painted valves and gauges. The interior of the cab is lighted, and that light does turn off when the engine starts moving, and there's also a red glow in the firebox when the engine is in operation. Now let's take a look at the top of the engine. Starting in the front, we've got the four smokestacks, and those lead down to an operating smoke unit. And of course, to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you just pour the smoke fluid directly down any one of these stacks. Moving back, we've got some nice detailing on the sand dome and then some nice detailing for the throttle controls and so forth back here. Moving back, we've got some nice separately applied pop-off valves there, a dynamo here, and a little whistle here. On top of the cab, there's a cast-in roof vent. And again, I think it's cast-in because this is a slightly older tooling that Lionel is using. If this was a brand new tooling, this would probably open up. But again, it's not that big of a deal. Here's a quick look at the back of the cab. There are some nice cast-in details up here. And then down here, we've got the drawbar, and there's the optical sensor that sends data from the engine to the electronics package in the tender. Here's a look at the underside of the engine. There are three pickup rollers right here. There are two traction tires on the last set of drivers. And then back here under the cab, you've got the control switches for the engine. Right here is the smoke unit control switch. And then on the other side, you've got the run program switch and the Odyssey speed control on off switch. That takes care of the engine. Now let's take a look at the tender. The tender doesn't have a whole lot going on, but that's the way these things were. They were very simple and elegant in a way. On the side, we've got die cast metal side frames on the trucks. There's some cast in piping detail down here. And then we've got the nice crisp Pennsylvania logo up here. And that's about it. On the front of the tender, again, there's not a whole lot to look at, but there are some nice cast-in details here and down here. And then on the drawbar, we've got the second optical sensor that sends data between the engine and the electronics in the tender. The back of the tender is really the busiest part of the tender. There are separately applied metal grab irons on either side, a separately applied metal ladder right here. There's an operating backup light as well as operating marker lights. There's a separately applied legible builder's plate right there. We've got nice step detail down here. And then there's an operating coupler that can be thrown from the legacy remote. I'm going to show you two shots of the top of the tender. From this angle, we can see the coal load. The coal load is cast in. It's metal like the rest of the tender, but it is cast in instead of being a load of real coal. Now, I think that's because, again, this is a slightly older tooling that Lionel is using. And on the older tooling, they had the cast metal coal load instead of the real coal. And I'm willing to bet, once again, that if this was a brand new tooling, they would use real coal, just like on most other modern high-end steam engines. But again, it doesn't look bad. I'm not saying anything negative about it. It would just look better if it was a real coal load. And who knows, maybe one day for a rainy day project, I'll come in here and put some glue down and lay down a layer of real coal just to enhance the look. From the other angle, we can see that the deck on top of the tender kind of rides up under the coal load a little bit. There are some nice cast-in details up here, and then of course we've got that great Pensy Tuscan red paint. If we take a look at the underside of the tender, there are two pickup rollers, one here and one here. There are two speakers for the sound system, and they are located under this truck. There's an add-on water scoop right here. The infrared sensor is right there. And then right here is the master volume control for the engine. And it can be adjusted with a flathead screwdriver. 
Okay, the last thing we're going to do before we start this thing up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Well, my pick for best feature this time around is a bit personal, so you may not agree with it, and that's okay. But this is my first model of a steam turbine, and more to the point, this is my first model of a steam turbine with the digital sounds of a steam turbine. And so, when I first started this thing up, it sounded a little weird. And that's not to say I was surprised. I knew it would sound different, but it was still interesting nonetheless, because it's a steam engine, but it doesn't have the chuff, chuff, chuff sounds like a steam engine. Instead, you get the constant roar of the steam turbine. And so for that reason, it actually sounds more like a diesel engine than a steam engine, because there's just the constant noise of the engine and none of those traditional steam sounds. And so that makes it a very unique engine. I've got a lot of steam engines in my collection, but none of them sound like this. And so for me, the best feature is the sounds of the steam turbine. And I can tell you that if you've got some regular steam engines in your collection and you're looking for something a little bit different, you may want to try one of these because it sounds like no other steam engine out there. All right, it's time to take this thing for a spin. So let's go ahead and start it up. Okay, let's give a listen to the whistle. And now here's the bell. There's a sound effect for the tender being filled with water, so let's give that a listen. My water's full? Affirmative. Out. Finally, let's give a listen to some of the crew talk sounds, and as always, I know some of you don't like the crew talk sounds, and that's okay. You don't have to use them if you don't like them. I like to use them because I think they're fun. I don't think they're especially realistic, but they're a lot of fun, so let's give them a listen. Okay, let's go ahead and roll it out.
Okay, that about wraps it up for this review. This is a great model, and as I said earlier, it's got a very unique looking sound to it, so if you're looking for something different, you may want to give one of these a try. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, the retail price is right at $1,300, although if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a decent discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can call them at 770-339-7780 or find them on the web at www.legacystation.com. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. To discuss this model or any other O-Gage trains and to meet other O-Gage modelers, check out the O-Gage Railroading Magazine online forum at ogrforum.ogagerr.com. All right, it's time to see this thing in action, so let's go ahead and start it up. Or not. Maybe I should turn on the power first. <laughs>